Melissa. Hello. I feel like giving you a hug. Why, why not? <laughs> Gorgeous lady. Thank so you. you're back for another collab and we are enjoying these, aren't we? Lots of therapy. Mm. And you've had a reflexology with me before. Yes, I have. I loved it so much. Yeah, I really like aromatherapy oils as well, so having that mixed in there, I loved it. It's quite unusual, I think. Um, so that's why we call it Swiss Reflex, because it's a different take on standard reflexology. So I've got lots of friends here. These are all my friends, my essential oils. And they've all got different qualities. And I wish I knew every quality of every friend. How oh, you would want to know all your qualities of all your friends. But uh, from the ones I know, I'm going to put some together in a while, once I've done the assessment for your reflexology, that will help your overall body health. It's not just for your feet, it's for your whole body and mind. And each essential oil has uh, different natural chemical components which will help you in lots of different ways. So they might help digestively, respiratory, or they might help with muscular skeletal issues and structure. They might help mentally and emotionally, and many also help spiritually. Okay. Mm which is fascinating. Um, now that doesn't mean to say that one oil is only good for one thing, mm -hmm. because one oil will have many different ways it can help you. And what, as an aromatherapist, in fact I'm a clinical aromatherapist, I've done more advanced training, as a clinical aromatherapist it's our job to work out which oils which have a whole range like um what do you call them those maps those little it's like a spider map but i didn't want to say the word spider <laughs> <laughs> um when you've got a word in the middle and lots of reasons around oh, it yes spider diagram it is There's a spider diagram you see okay right so Imagine essential oil in the middle and it'll have lots of different reasons why it can help you okay. to a lesser or further extent. And they will cross over like a Venn diagram to many other essential oils. And it's our job to find that centre of the Venn diagram, okay. to find that mix of oils that will give you today in this yeah. moment, because you'll be different tomorrow, you'll be different next year, mm. the best treatment possible. Okay, so it's like detective work almost. It is, you yeah. have to put your Inspector Clouseau hat on. <sighs> so, so for instance, if you were to come to me, glasses on, if you were to come to me and say you needed help with your respiratory system, mm -hmm. so maybe um, a touch of asthma or sinus issues, headaches caused by blocked sinuses, ear infections. I'd be looking to oils like myrrh and naiuli and oh, a big hitter, red thyme, definitely sweet thyme. I'd be looking at Eucalyptus stegariana, one of my favourites, cedarwood as well, uh, myrtle, mm, even hoe leaf, which is a bit like rosewood. And then some of my larger oils, just because I use so much of them that I need them in bigger bottles. Definitely sweet basil and we also have peppermint, wonderful for breathing, respiratory. We have lemon, very cleansing. Tea tree, big hitter, so antifungal. Anti, antiseptic. In fact, every essential oil is antiseptic. Uh, 
eucalyptus. So there's lots of different forms of eucalyptus. This one is called eucalyptus stegar. No, it's eucalyptus stegariana I've got there. That's my friend there. Eucalyptus smithii is um, an amazing essential oil. It's one of the very first ones I learnt because it has very small molecules and therefore is fine to use with babies and children and the elderly and the frail and, uh, and, and with ailments. So eucalyptus smithii you can diffuse in a room even with youngsters in and it, it won't be harmful because the molecules are small. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have here? Definitely rosemary. So, you know, just for the respiratory system, we have a lot of oils here. So, let's switch across to the digestive system. And I would be looking at some of the same ones. Maybe thyme, definitely peppermint. Peppermint's very cooling and calming. I would go for coriander. So these are all the digestive ones here. I'd go for black pepper. Black pepper, I know it's a strong spice, a big, big hitter, but actually fantastic for muscle ache and pain and digestive system, very calming. I would also go for cinnamon, mandarin, marjoram sweet, Ah, uh, ginger. Obviously everyone knows that ginger is very calming. And the way I think about it is, if you were to grate a root ginger and then you wash the grater, it, the, the, the old remnants of, of the ginger left on the grater just fall away. They wash away and leave nothing left like no like cheese does or or a potato would it just is a clean root and it's the same with uh, it's the same with ginger and the root it leaves it very cleanly within you so you have this gorgeous cleansing effect of ginger and the same with lemon, you know, L lemon and ginger, as we tend to put them together, just really cleansing and purifying. So, digestive system, respiratory system, uh, and one of my other favourite conversations, the hormonal system. So, you know, let's think about menopause, let's think about PMT, let's think about infertility, let's think about amenorrhea, which is absence of periods. Um, let's think about starting periods right early in life. So we're looking at ones definitely like rose geranium, German chamomile. Look, I love it so much. I've got two rose geraniums. We'd be looking at geranium itself and a lovely, lovely one, clary sage. Now, clary sage reminds me of birth because I used clary sage with my first or second, my second birth because it helps retract the uterus and dilate the uterus. Um, the only thing is it worked so quickly that it happened very quickly with me, uh, which is fine, you'd say, oh, excellent. Yeah. But there's a certain amount of pain that happens if, uh, it, if, it happens quickly. if it happens really quickly. So that's happened with me and I dealt with it. I didn't need any drugs or anything else. Um, and I was in a water birth uh, unit at the time. So, you know, you've got the support of the warm water. And yeah. But yeah, so whenever I smell clary sage, it takes me straight back to wonderful, wonderful moment of giving birth to my beautiful baby. Yeah, so it works really. So in the end, it was just on a tissue. We had to put the tissue out of the room. It, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Is uh, that powerful? Jez put it the other side of the room. I could still smell it. And so I said, no, it it needs to go out of the room. Mm. It needs to go in the bin, really, yeah. because it was work, working, working too much too with well. me. <laughs> because the other thing is, Clary Sage, fantastic for pain relief. 
Mm. Um, so even though it was happening quickly, there was a certain amount of pain with it, but it was reducing that pain for me. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So a lovely friend to yeah. have. Yeah. Memories with it. Oh, and of course, I haven't talked about lavender, you know, lavender hormonally. Um, in fact, lavender, I call it an umbrella oil because it's good for practically everything. It covers all of these issues, digestive, respiratory, hormonal, just to name a few of the systems of the body. Mm. So let's see what comes up with you today. Yeah. I'm just really curious. Yeah. Like, what are the differences in colours on the oh. labels? Is that the base note thing? I thought it might be. So, what's blue, do you think? Oh, I think I remember earlier that frankincense, which was a base note, was That's blue, right. potentially. That's right. But what are the other two? That's what I don't know. Is middle there... and top notes. Right. So my yellows are middle notes. Okay. And my reds are top notes. Okay. So you can see I've got a, well, I've got a good spread, but yeah. a lot of top and base, I think. Do you think? Wait, which, sorry, which one was top again? Yellow? Red. Red. But I suppose yeah. a good it's spread. A yellow. Yeah. yeah. So what you really want in the perfect, perfect mix of mm. essential oils is a top, middle and base note. Right. Because the base will fix the other two because the base is not as much volatile. The yeah. top note is very volatile, so that means it will absorb into the air and diffuse into the air really easily. That's mm. why you smell them first, because it's in the air. Mm. Yeah. So a little part of that oil has gone up your nose. It's literally sitting in your nose. That's why you can smell, smell it. it. Yeah. And mm. then the middle note is just nice. It's that it's that steady influence that you've got of the middle of the oil. Yeah. And of course that's absorbing into your skin, your scalp, mm. um, infusing and you're breathing mm. it in. There's um, an olfactory bulb, O-L-F-A-C-T-O-R-Y, olfactory bulb, as in um, like a gland, let's call it, yeah. just behind here. Yeah. Um, so when you breathe in and you breathe an essential oil, you're breathing it in, and there are different components of that oil, different um, chemical elements, will go up and hit the olfactory bulb. And the olfactory bulb will decipher whether those elements need to go to various different parts of your head. So it could be helping with memory, it could be mm. helping hormonally, digestively, yeah. respiratory. And they will send messages, and that message might be euphoric, it might be for upliftedness mm. and happiness or it might be sedatory so it might be sedating you and calming you and just saying everything's okay you know um, so lots of different messages can happen at that point and it is really interesting when I have people that have uh, an essence of depression or anxiety or f just feeling low or down or not being able to put their finger on what it is mm. um, and you know when you meet people in life some people are quite depressed but actually quite manic with it mm. and you think oh you need to calm down a bit some people are depressed and can't get off the sofa you know and different essential oils will have the up or or calming, upping or calming effect, depending on which essential oil you use. And when I have people as clients in the Bothy, I use that sense of knowing the oils, knowing my friends, to work out which type of upping or downing we need to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's a fine balance, because you can't just say, that's good for de depression, use that, because yeah, yeah. It, might be, it might be sedating and therefore they, they might not need to keep, mm. keep down, they might need it's some upliftment. Yeah. 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 Wow. So it's really like a case-by-case case basis. Absolutely. It's that, wow. back to that Venn diagram. Yeah. I think I can see some of the ones I used last time, so I'm curious to see whether my subconscious will want the same or not. There is another way of finding out which oil would be right for you today. Mm. And that is dowsing. Have you ever done dowsing? I don't think so, no. 
Shall we do that? Yeah, that sounds... I love trying new things. Okay, yeah. so we'll do it after the assessment, okay. shall we? Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much. That's I'm right. looking forward to it. <laughs> so, I've got some lovely chamomile hydrolat here. A hydrolat is the water that they used to throw away when making essential oils from the distillation process. Mm -hmm. And now they realise that hydrolats have their own qualities which are often, sometimes, quite different from the qualities of essential oils of the, of the same plant. Oh, isn't that amazing? Um, they're safer to use, they have fewer uh, contraindications. So I'm just giving your feet a nice little smooth off with the cotton infused Roman chamomile pads. That smells lovely. Mm. It smells almost like licorice. <sighs> oh, last time I did Melissa, didn't I? I did, yes. <laughs> Melissa for Melissa. <laughs> well, we've got Roman chamomile today. And Roman chamomile is anti-inflammatory. It's very calming. It's good for sleep, good for skin, like eczema. Beautiful oil, or hydrolat. Hello, feet. So, do you want me to explain reflexology? Yes, please. Or not? Yes? Yeah. Okay. I think you did briefly last time, but I would love to know. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love learning. <laughs> You'll be able to know it all. I mean, well, you've... I think last time when you mentioned top notes and bottom notes, I kind of, from context, have worked out what it is, but it's so fascinating hearing you give the explanation in depth as to what exactly the oils are doing. Mm. I, I really love the whole oil of reflexology. I, I just find I've always been fascinated by it. Mm. So maybe you should do something. Maybe I you did. should. My mum used to do it as well. So as a kid, oh. I was always kind of interested. Oh, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and now look at you. Yeah. Lovely. I bet she's so proud of you. I think she's jealous. <laughs> ah, aren't we all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so, beautiful map of the body on the feet here. So we've got the left side of the body, the right side of the body. This is the spine going down the centre. So we've got the beautiful shape of your spine running from the neck down all the vertebra, right down to the sacrum. Then all the organs contained in the upper body are contained in the upper part of the foot down to the narrowing, the waist here, and likewise for below. So the head is actually cut into two. We've got the big toe here, left and right sides. The sinuses are in the other toes. Uh, the lungs are in the foot upper pads here. And I will explain what part of the body I'm doing as I go forward. Uh, how it might feel for you when I'm testing the feet. And bearing in mind, I have extremely short nails. Okay. So it won't be a nail or a nail edge that you'll feel. But if I was to press in a certain place and it feels sharp to you, that's a sign that there is some congestion there in the meridian, the energy line that works its way through the body. Now those meridians aren't to do with the nerve system, the circulation, the white blood cells. It's its own system okay. of, of meridians that has been worked out over hundreds, if not thousands of years by the ancients that this works where the meridians end up at the extremities and gives you a map of the body. The same for the hands, the same for the face, and the same for the ears. So the ear is an upside down fetus. So this is the head here, and this is the spine going round the back oh, there. Okay. Um, Okay, so looking at the body, I'm going to have a little feel one point at a time and one system at a time. See, that feels a bit clicky to I me. I can feel that, yeah. It did to you? Yeah, it did. Something was 
jiggling along with your finger. Yeah, you see, the more you have of treatment, the more you're becoming body aware. It's really good. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, less so on this side. Yeah, can't feel it on that side. Just That's... a little bit on your solar plexus, you see. You're That's doing so my weird. job. I, I couldn't feel it as much last time I was oh, here. Okay. That's amazing. Um, so now going on to the sciatic nerve. So starting at the very base or near the base of the spine, so right at the bottom of the foot, and coming round and down the leg, which works its way down here. Same for this side. I'm just going to pick the foot up and feel it around there. And down. Okay, that feels good, sciatic nerve. Now looking at, let's have a look at the neck and the spine. So feeling this side of your neck, your right side back and just feeling down there's a lovely channel here natural channel which is the side of the erector spinae the, the the muscles of the spine let's just have a feel of that neck first oh it feels oh yeah on your left can you feel that that is painful it's not nice no it's not nice <laughs> <laughs> and then the back of the neck on the left hand side and now coming round down the spine to the base and bearing in mind you have a lot of treatment so yeah. I'm hoping not to find much <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Um, okay, now shoulder blades. So coming up behind here. These are your angel wings. The only thing I can feel with those is that they're slightly dehydrated, which I know sounds really odd. How can shoulders be hydrated? Yeah. But I mean, everything needs hydration. And the I reason I can feel that is because when I'm pushing, it's not inflating very quickly. It leaves a dent for, for too long. Oh. Yeah. Do you know what I, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So just, is that just a lack of drinking water then? And yes. Has it gone there? Yes. But I know with my core therapy that sometimes clients come in saying, I have drunk buckets of water, there's no way I'm dehydrated. Yeah. You know, when they get on the couch and I do the hair pull thing. Mm. And I say, well, you are still dehydrated, you need to drink water. Mm. And I say, there is probably a reason your body isn't holding on to the water. Maybe you are drinking plenty of water, but mm. you're just getting rid of it rather than holding on to that moisture. And there are certain foods, apparently, maybe viewers can do some research on this, that help retain and absorb that moisture so you hold on for longer. If you're one of those people that seems to always be drinking water but not feel uh, or show hydration, like, yeah. like showing hydration here, um, I believe, but people can look into this, yeah. that electrolytes... Are you okay. familiar with that? So like yeah, sports, sports drinks. drinks um, so my, Jez and I cycle and we have these little tablets that we put into our drinks when mm. we're cycling to help uh, rehydrate the mm. body when cycling. And they are, for instance, electrolytes, but you can get them in lots of different mm. types of uh, medium. Um, I've also been told that drinking lemon water helps Right. Whether this, these yeah. are accurate, people can look into this. But what I'm just suggesting here mm -hmm. is that just because you drink lots of water might not mean that you are hydrated. Yeah. The body might show dehydration in different ways and look into ways of holding on to your moisture. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good advice. Thank mm. you. I've never, I've never thought about that before. Mm. Mm. Okay, joints. So we're looking at elbows. I noticed with your massage earlier that your elbows are quite dry. Oh, okay. Have you noticed? Is that this, this bit of it? Just the, the back yeah, elbow. I, I don't really moisturise my elbows. No. Or 
or body in general? So. Do not, yeah. I, I moisturise every morning and I have done since, I think, since I started doing aromatherapy when I was 28. Oh, wow. So I'm more shocked because I make Do you not my feel own. Feel sticky. And... No, my uh... my skin just feels beautifully hydrated and soft, uh... and I put different essential oils in every time. I just right. think, oh, what do I feel like today? And I'll put Ooh, different ones in. That makes it quite fun, I guess. So I do a big pot, and yeah. it lasts me like three months, and then I get through it, and then I make a whole new mix. Oh. So yeah, so maybe put something on your elbows. They're a little bit dry. They're, they're okay today because I've just treated them. Mm. Um, and then hips on the bone. This one's clicking. Ooh. And then knees. I'm just wondering if your thigh is going to come up. That's a good point. That came up in core therapy, didn't it? So let's have a look at respiratory system. So we're looking at the lungs. Oh, a bit crunchy. You might be trying to fight something off at the moment because I can't, you don't suffer with asthma, sinusitis, any respiratory issue? Um, I sometimes can get a bit breathless, but it's not asthma or anything. What occasion, it's like walking up a steep hill or something? Uh, there's not always a reason there, just... Maybe, yeah, sometimes even like a tiny bit of exercise. It comes in waves. I okay. think it's like some form of long COVID, but... Oh. Yeah, so I haven't had it much recently, though. So yeah. as long as I'm not ex like overdoing too much physical activity, I can breathe fine. But I think the doctor said I breathe from too high up sometimes instead of... Too shallowly. Too shallow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So practice some yogic breathing. Mm. where you inflate the abdomen when you're breathing in. Yeah. And you pull the abdomen in in order to chuck the air out. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing because on days like this or when I've been doing lots of filming, I can feel that my breathing issues are a lot better because I think with treatments, you're often told to breathe deeply and oh. kind of forced to breathe properly, like, yeah. to help yourself. So I've been really good today. I haven't had any breathing issues. So, yeah. That's nice. Self-care is good. Oh, it really <laughs> is, yeah. And surely you're the queen of self-care. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> Especially at the moment. <laughs> OK, so we've looked at respiratory, I've looked at sinuses just now. Now we're going to look at the eyes. Not really, not really. I, I, I was going to say something, but it would be really picky. So that feels quite solid and that feels tiny bit clicky, but not enough to do something about. And then the ears. Can you feel the bone there? Yeah. Mm. I can really feel it. No, they feel okay. They feel okay, yeah. Uh, so we've done skeletal, respiratory. Let's go on to digestive. So I'm going to come across the small intestine, working from the right-hand side. And to feel into the liver, a large organ, a little bit higher up than the small intestine. I'm working quite firmly in a caterpillar movement with my thumb. And then to the pancreas and stomach. I thought something was clicking, but I think it was just the movement of my thumb on you. Friction on your foot and then coming across again more small intestines and now want to come down that ileocecal valve up the ascending colon across transcending down the descending and out
Feels fine. Good. Despite just having had lunch. Yeah. It's mm. good. All right. Um, let's look at the lymph system. So I'm going to come to the front of the foot, just down between the first and second toes, just an inch down here. That one's feeling a little bit blocked. So that's lymph in the chest area. And then coming around the inguinal lymph. Feels okay. The reproductive system, so coming the outside of the ankle. Caterpillar movement with a soft finger pad. Being very sensitive to any feelings here. And then in the center, just relax your feet. Feels okay, feels good. So that's ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus. Um, now I want to look at the excretory system. So we're looking from the adrenal gland to the kidney, down the ureter to the bladder. Yeah, the kidney's tight. And, and it is on that side. I always treat the kidneys anyway, but I will definitely treat them here. Right, so pituitary is in the big toes, because it's in the head. It just sits just right in the middle there. And... Any click on your left side, right side's fine. Fascinating. And then up the thyroid to the parathyroid. Feels good. Mm. Lovely. Oh, wonderful. Lovely. So, glandular system, not bad all sorted so let's have a look at putting together some essential oils using dowsing okay so i'm just going to do some dowsing with my trusty little dowser here and i think you're supposed to give them a name i don't know if i've given her a name before let's just ask actually i know this is going to sound really strange to you guys it probably does to me as well but so my little dowser here, can you show me a yes? I'm not doing anything. I can remember watching this years ago in person and on TV and thinking that hand is moving. My hand is not moving at all and it's going around in a clockwise, yeah, a clockwise manner. Okay, and stop. Okay, little dowser, can you show me a no? Okay, it's a bit more reticent, but it is starting to move. Oh, when I'm talking, it stops. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's making very small anti-clockwise movement. Wow, that's so fascinating. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Oh, it's getting a bit bigger now. You... Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's going anti-clockwise. Okay. Okay, little dowser. Would you like the name Amber? No. That's a really strong no. I thought you liked Amber. That's no. stronger than the example for no. <laughs> yes. yes. It really doesn't like yeah. Amber. Melissa, give me a name. Um, oh gosh. It's kind of stripey though. Stripey. <laughs> okay. My little dowser, would you like to be called stripey? Oh my goodness. Is that a yes or a no? 
puppy, yes. Really likes Stripey. <laughs> I yes. would never have thought of that. Honestly, I'm not moving my hands <laughs> at all. Much. Look how strong that is. I think it's got a sense of humour. I, I like it. Okay. We can be good friends. Okay. <laughs> And you'll notice when I stop it, I just put my hand under. I'm not actually in contact with it. Right. So, uh, Stripey, I would like you to choose some essential oils for Melissa, my friend here. Is that okay? That's a really strong yes. I'm glad. Imagine if it said no. Yeah, well, then we'd be doing kinesiology instead. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank Stripey. you very much. Thank you, Stripe. <laughs> I can't believe this. It's hysterical. Okay. So I have a whole range of essential oils here. I'm just about to put a mix together for Melissa's Swiss reflexology treatment. So I'm going to move the dowser over the or, or towards the essential oils and it may well point at a, an essential oil that it wants me to use i am not doing that at all and instead of going in a circle a clockwise or anti-clockwise circle it's starting to swing as soon as i mentioned essential oils now it's pointing to one but there are a number in that line so i'm going to Bring one over and see if it's this one. Not moving at all. Okay, we're quite strong for Ilang Ilang. Now Ilang Ilang is really good for the skin. It really helps with blemishes and balancing skin tone. It's really good for sleep. It's very commonly used for insomnia and for calming and sedating. Okay, so we're using a Lang Ylang. So we've got our first essential oil. Okay. So let's just put that to the side. Now, as well as a Lang Ylang, what other essential oil would you like me to use, Stripey? So I'm guessing that you mean rose geranium. Do you mean rose geranium? This is going to be a beautiful mix. So far you've got two gorgeous flowers. Mm -hmm. Rose geranium and ylang ylang. Look, a base note and a middle note. Oh uh, yeah, so that's the blue and the yellow. Um, so stripey, give me a third essential oil to use for Melissa's reflexology. I'm wondering if you mean myrrh. So in my eye line, that was the, the one that, yeah. Oh, that's a very strong, yeah. It's a very strong and um, it's another bass note. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I wondered about that. Like, does, does Stripey know which ones can go together? Yeah, you, you just have to trust the universe. So we've got three gorgeous essential oils here. Myrrh, Ylang Ylang, and Rose Geranium. I'm going to add it to my pre-prepared little pot here of organic sunflower oil. So... Let's put a couple of drops of each one, ready to apply to the feet. Oh, I can smell that one already. It hasn't even come out yet. There you go. So that was rose geranium. Can you smell that? Lovely. And a couple of ylang ylang. Now myrrh. This might be a bit slower. Okay, Murph. As 
covered in biblical myrrh. Beautiful. So, I'm going to let you smell this beautiful concoction and see what you think. Oh, wow. Ooh. Do you want a little on your inside? Yes, it please. And I can smell it all day. It's so nice. I've never smelled anything like that mix before. I can't compare it to anything, so I'm struggling to know how to explain it, but... I can smell rose geranium the most, I think. It's like a deeper version of the flowery smell. Um, and ylang ylang is quite distinctive. I'm quite that's familiar. That's what that is. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it is. That's why yeah. I'm smelling. And yeah. That's lovely because I don't think I've ever used that much in treatments. Okay. So it's very new to me. Mm. It's lovely. Mm. It's very refreshing when it's like uplifting. Are you familiar with myrrh? Do you want to smell it on its own? I'd love to. Just smell the top. Oh. Oh, that's really interesting. That might be the depth I was trying to put into words. Yeah. Oh, I'd never knew what mess smelled like until now. Mm. Really if you nice. take a really deep breath, can you feel how that would be good for the respiratory system? Yeah, it's similar, similar feeling to eucalyptus, like that, mm. going right in. And very spiritual. Not just mm. the connotation to the Bible, but it, it's, it really uh, looks after your spirituality. It mm. really brings you home. It's very good for meditating with. Oh. Mm. I mean, I'm trying to do more meditation, so maybe that would be a way of helping the practice. Oh, so, of course. Yeah. Well, this is your mix. It's got stripey written all over it. I love stripey. I think stripey is <laughs> Stri my new best friend. Stripey. I like that stripey likes me. <laughs> is he, she, that you are stripey. Yeah, not right? Amber at all. Oh. Amber's also a cute name. But well, a bit more girly. Yeah, not like so kiddy. <laughs> oh. Stripey. Stripey. Right. It. So, should we give you a nice Swiss reflex treatment? Yeah, thank you so much. Would you like a hot towel over you? Oh, yes, please. That would be lovely. Thank you. In and under. Nice. Thank you. Warm enough. Nice and Your steady. feet will warm up now. They're yeah. a little bit chilly, aren't they? Yeah, my feet and hands often are. sunflower with, do you remember the mix? Ma um, ylang ylang and then it, was it rose ger geranium? Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's the first time I've ever smelt what the was like. It's not what I expected. No. No. Yeah, it's beautiful. I've had, um, I've smelt frankincense before, and I love frankincense, but yeah, I'd never smelt myrrh, so. All you need now is gold. Gold? Oh, <laughs> not to smell though. <laughs> I think actually when I was quite young, there was a nativity play at church and I was the king that carried myrrh. Oh. Yeah, but I'd never smelt it. it <laughs> I just had like a fake a thing a that box. was a box given to carry. I think sometimes in nativities, they're not just shown as a sparkly box, but they're shown as like a, um, a beautiful receptacle jug or oh. um, like a, a decorated bottle with a lovely stopper on it or like with a lovely point for pouring mm. you know because yeah. it obviously myrrh is a, a liquid 
So, I'm going to start the treatment now. I'm going to overlap my hands and clear down the spine. Please feel free at any time just to relax your head or close your eyes if you feel comfortable to, or you may want to watch whatever you want to do. It's completely fine. So clearing down the spine. It's interesting, when I close my eyes, it's almost easier to focus on the, the sensations. Ah. I find that with meditating. Mm. Mm. So I'm just looking at the map of your body on my drawing here, and I'm going to be working on the sinuses, the solar plexus, the lungs, the shoulder points, the hips, the kidneys, and the cervical lymph. Yeah, so now I'm here a little bit longer, I can feel a little bit of congestion halfway down the spine on the left-hand side. It's just about kidney level, but of course it's on the spine itself. Yeah, I don't know if you can feel that, Melissa, but there's a little bit of tightness right there. Yeah, I can feel that. Hmm. So I'm just going to give that an extra TLC. Visit that, I think. Now coming up to the solar plexus, working on the feet symmetrically and in a clockwise manner, because of course the solar plexus is also a chakra, as well as a very physical part of us. It's a network of nerves that sits in the abdomen, just just lower than the rib cage, just above the umbilical. And just feeling into that area here, instilling some calm because the solar plexus is all to do with our contentment, our feeling of coming home, restedness and self-esteem. It's a beautiful, large and bright yellow sunshine chakra. Lovely, that feels better. Really good. Uh, now coming on to shoulder points while I'm here in this area. And those essential oils will also have a hydrating effect, not just the carrier sunflower. So I'm just supporting with my thumbs, but then circling around the shoulder points. And sometimes shoulders have the added connotation of supporting us because they they carry our load they help us carry our responsibilities in life and so by massaging into the reflex point of the shoulders it helps to lighten our load it helps us to feel capable and in control of our responsibilities and burdens hmm much better 
now up to the sinuses. When we were talking earlier, I was just testing the sinuses, which are the toe pads. And it's, it's already gone actually just by testing and minimally treating. So on the right foot, fourth toe, I just found a little glitch there that needed healing. Already feels better. But strangely, the left one is now clicking. So I'm going to give that a little extra attention. Yeah, there we are. Lovely. And then coming round to the neck. The neck was really tight earlier, so using the pad of my thumb round the left side of the neck mobilizing the toe at the same time to help mobilize the neck. Hmm. I'd call it sore but I know that I'm not experiencing the sensations but to me feels like I'm having it done so that feels sore to me. Um, it's quite tight at the back just giving it a little extra flexibility whereas the flexibility of the toe is good it moves really well. Lovely okay and then into the other side yeah again some flexibility Lovely, nice loose neck. And now working into the lungs. So I'm going to caterpillar track movement upwards symmetrically up the lung pads, these large lungs that we all have, these beautiful organs associated with the colour white. And if we wanted to clear our lungs because we feel like we're congested or we've been inhaling pollution or we're suffering with long COVID or some other anomaly, then it's really interesting to focus on the colour white while laying soft hands on your lungs, not too heavily, and then breathing out several times with an out breath and the sound and that will really help clear the lungs it's really good for the the chinese meridian of the lung oh they're feeling much better good and coming down to the hips, just the right hip came up earlier but I, uh, I might as well treat both at the same time using my middle finger in a circular action. Yeah, the right one is clicking. So that tells me that there may well be some congestion in the meridian coming down to that right hip.
Oh, that's already better. Still a little click, so I'm just going to go a little bit longer on this area. Mm. Breathing in the healing. Breathing in the softness, the alignment, the health of the hips. Feeling like this, this hip needs a little bit of extra attention, so I'm just working on the foot itself to release the bone on the side of the foot which relates to the hip. If you like doing a little tweener, bending and pushing, push and pull. Mm, that's better. Okay, so now coming to... Oh yes, this shoulder blade, the scapula, needed a little extra attention, so we're... I'm going to use both thumbs here. This is near the heart, just under here would be the heart, so I don't want to be putting any pressure or any beating sensation towards the heart, so I'm avoiding that area. I'm using both thumb pads to come up. Just like if I was giving a back massage, I would be pushing both hands in an effleurage movement upwards and over the shoulders to clear any congestion and waste. Moving the lymph. Yeah, so earlier I mentioned that the shoulder pad just felt dehydrated, just felt like it needed more water. Uh, I'm not sure how much water Melissa's been drinking today, but this just feels like it leaves a little bit more or else some way of holding on to the hydration for longer. So just coming to the kidney area, adrenals first of all. I might cross my hands and just work opposite feet. Oh, that's better. I can apply more thumb pad in a firmer action. So into the adrenals. Beautiful. Hmm. Down the kidney to the ureter and the bladder. So all the waste and the lymph that we've got moving in the feet and the body so far. We are now sealing the deal by clearing the 
kidneys to the bladder to enable the body to get rid of any toxins that have been scooped up. Yeah, so the kidneys definitely need a little extra attention. That might feel a little sore. I'm using my body to work the hands. In a lovely, rhythmical, flowing action. Always reassuring, creating space and warmth. And coming up to the Brazilian toe technique, starting on the middle toe. Instilling some warmth. Letting the energies flow. Holding on to the energy for as long as possible. Amazing feeling in the room. In our bodies. And in our friendship. some of the oil.
Smells divine. Hot socks. <gasps> Lovely. Thank you. Oh, that feels amazing. <laughs> so toasty. Oh, here we are, my love. I feel good. Yeah. Oh, I got so sleepy halfway. I think I did too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah. Melissa, you're an angel to treat. Thank you for Aww. coming and I, I really cherish our times together. Oh, we'll have to do it again soon. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> you're, it's always lovely coming here as well. Mm -hmm. do, you're welcome do. anytime. Oh, thank you. Oh. Oh, okay, yeah. so it's been a really wonderful day mm. and I'll see you again next time. Yeah.